The Coon Rapids Fire Department recently received two new boats to be used in water rescue operations on the Mississippi River. One boat is designed for use above the dam, the other boat works in the shallow waters below. Steve Erickson has more on how the boats work and we find out why they were needed. Well, living near the river, it's important to have the right tools in case there's an emergency on the water. The fire department recently purchased two new rescue boats, and joining me now to talk more about that is Captain Mark Seaton of the Coon Rapids Fire Department. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Let's talk first about the boat that you're standing next to right there. This is a 13-foot inflatable with a rigid hull. That's correct. Uh, we, this boat was primarily designed to operate from the, the boil that's on the low side of the dam and south of that. Uh, that area is a combination of really deep water and really shallow water. And we needed a boat that could transverse that shallow water. There's places there where it's, it's not much more than ankle deep, so we needed a boat that could handle that. So what, what we have here is uh, that has a low draft, shallow V boat, and it has a jet drive motor on it that's operates similar to a wave runner's motor in the fact that there's no propeller, it sucks water in and, you, and blows water out and that's how the boat is propelled. It's a small boat that's operating in a small area uh, because uh, we have limited access to launch the boat down there. We're in the process of actually uh, building a special emergency ramp just so that we can get in and out of that area. Over the last boat that we had, this is about a foot longer than the old boat that we had, and the rigid hull. Uh, many boats this size have an inflatable hull, but that, we, what we found with that is that created too much drag. So that was a lot for the little motor to overcome. So by going to the rigid hull, it improved our uh, lower draft and it improved our speed by not having as much drag. So that increases uh, our response time and our ability to move, maneuver on the water. All right, let's talk about some of the equipment. What is inside this boat? Okay. Uh, we have life jackets for the people that will be operating the boat. We also carry spare life jackets for any victims in case they're not wearing a life jacket. Uh, we have throw bags uh, so that we can uh, throw a rope to somebody that maybe is around an obstacle or in an area where we can't maneuver to. Uh, we have a floating backboard so that if we have to get in the water and we can put somebody that's injured on the backboard, while they're in the water and then get them up over the, the side and, and into the boat. So this is the smaller boat. This will, again, will be used for any rescues that need to be done below the Coon Rapids yep. Dam. And we do have two boats. Yep. Let's talk about this boat now. The, next to us, this is the bigger bo boat. This is the 23-foot Zodiac. And tell us more about this boat. Okay, primarily going to operate in the uh, recreational pool above the dam, uh, the upstream of the dam. It can also operate on Crooked Lake or any other lake. Uh, that we would get called to for mutual aid. But uh, the, the river is, is depth and size wise, it's like a lake, but it also has the current. We have a wide range of people that are operating in that pool of water. So we need to be able to maneuver on that water in the same way that the boats are maneuvering on that water. So we need some, a greater amount of horsepower, we need a greater capacity to haul more people, victims. That if, say, there were many people in the water, we need to be able to arrive with a boat that we can put lots of people into. Okay, now this has some of the similar equipment as the smaller boat, but it has some additional equipment. That's correct. Uh, light, we have uh, more life jackets. Some of them are stored in the compartments, but we have the, the two, as you can see, hanging right there because we're gonna immediately, at, at a minimum, we're gonna put two people on this boat, so they're gonna put those on as they leave, so that's why they're out, but I have a, a more in other compartments. I also have uh, wetsuits that uh, if we're thinking we're gonna put somebody in the water, we, wanna, we need uh, wetsuits for thermal protection and for just uh, abrasive type protection because sometimes we're operating in uh, the shallower water. I uh, also have equipment uh, just like the other boat. I have throw bags and, and devices that I can throw to a victim, flotation devices. Um, we have a floating backboard as well, same thing uh, as the other boat. Uh, we have a lighting package uh, so that we can be out there at nighttime and see uh, that is an area that is, there's no street lights, there's no lighting whatsoever out there, so we have to, if we want to see, we got to bring our own lights. So we have what we call scene lights that's going to light up the area around the boat. I have lighting that's going to light the deck up so that we can see what we're doing when treating a victim or a patient on the deck of the boat or preparing equipment or whatever. 
I have spotlights so that we can, uh, a rotating remote control spotlight on the very top so that we can, if we're in like search mode and we're trying to find either a boat or a victim floating in the water, I can search a, a, a wide range or a wide geographical area. Another item that we were able to put on there is a siren package, not because we need a siren to move people over, but the, what that comes with is a PA, and that was what we were really looking for, uh, because the ability to, uh, from boat to boat, to give clear instructions to another boat, say, for example, to put their, we've come across situations where we're approaching a boat in trouble, and they don't have their life jackets on. I want to be able to broadcast before I even get to them. You need to put your life jackets on. Uh, or give them other instructions for them, for us to work together to help get them out of the trouble that they're in. And as, the closer we get to the dam, the more difficult it is to hear with the roar of the water. So uh, an amplified PA system is very important in that situation. Um, so that, that was really, it, it's, it sounds simple, but it's really a very important tool for us. Uh, another item that we have up there is, our, uh, is, a, is a simple depth finder. It's very important to be familiar with what kind of water we're in and how deep it is and what obstructions there might be there. So that's a, uh, it's an inexpensive way for us to know that. We also have a, a, a built-in radio uh, that, that may seem insignificant, but normally we carry portable radios, handheld radios. Well, a handheld radio can be dropped in the water, and that has unfortunately happened uh, and that's just an accident, but we don't want to be out there and have that accident keep us from being able to communicate with our dispatchers and with shore-based rescue. So it's, it's built into the boat, so there's no chance of accidentally dropping that one in the water. Let's talk a little bit about the motors on this boat, because there's actually two of them. Yeah, uh, in designing this boat, we knew we were going to use it uh, in an area which at certain times of the year is very strong current. And, and even though the DNR closes that part of the river when the current's that strong, we all know that some people don't listen to and do what they're supposed to do. So we need to be able to operate out there safely. So as I talked about earlier, the fire department, we like redundancy. We, we're already going into a situation where something bad has happened or something has failed. And so we, we don't like putting all our eggs in one basket. So in this system, if one of these motors fail, the other one can still get us out of trouble. And that's the whole idea. We could potentially be trying to pull a boat out of danger that's headed toward the dam. At a critical moment, we don't want to have a failure on our equipment and endanger not only the person we're trying to rescue, but ourselves as well. So that's a big reason why we went with the two motor system. Uh, that, uh, that's the whole concept. All right. Let's talk about the training. You guys recently went out. We went out with you, and you trained at the Coon Rapids Dam. What was the purpose of that training, and uh, what did you hope to accomplish? Okay. On that particular evening, we were training our paid on call division, our, our, our volunteer division that uh, that works with us, and that was their first introduction to this boat. So basic operation was a big part of that. Uh, we also put people in the water and we were teaching how to get pe uh, an individual from the water up over the edge into the, into the boat. Uh, we are also teaching some search techniques. Uh, that was the first time we had had the boat out at nighttime. Um, and so we were using the lights and seeing how, how our design worked there. Uh, and we were very happy with that. We could, see, we could see a wide area around the boat, use the spotlight to look for victims that are far away from the boat. Uh, so this, and then the, the lighting, uh, we were able to see what we, were, what we were doing on the boat. It worked very well. We were very happy with it. All right. So training sessions like that are very important? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this truly is an area where seconds can count, and uh, we need to be proficient. So we have, to, we have to spend a lot of time making sure that all our people are proficient with the equipment and with what to do. All right. So most everybody has been through the training on this now. Yep. Will there be additional training on this boat? Absolutely. Uh, that, that was an introductory training, and we want to we want to just build proficiency. So next summer, when we have the whole summer to work with, uh, we will be out there uh, doing a, a wide range of training. All right. So we have two new boats here: the larger Zodiac for rescues above the dam, and the smaller inflatable here for rescues below the dam. Obviously, you guys hope you don't have to put these to use, but they're ready if need be. That's correct. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, Mark. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. The cost for the two new rescue boats was $78,000 and it was paid for out of the city's general fund.